Okay, part two with the uh, ionic compound properties. Okay, so in the last video you saw that we talked about the mechanism when the sodium atom encounters a chlorine atom. Chlor chlorine wants to gain one to get a full outer shell, uh, nonmetal halogen. Um, sodium nonmetal wants to lose one alkali metal. Okay, so right here, up here, I want to just show you a little key right here. Again, this is showing that when sodium gives that valence electron away, look, chlorine chloride has eight valence electrons over here. So it is stupidly, stupidly negative. Sodium, right, lost its valence electron. So therefore, it has eight, but in a smaller energy level. But over here, it lost one. It is stupidly positive. So if you remember the last video, they have no problem splitting apart in something else that it could attract to, but that's the dissolving part. You should have watched that. But let's pretend we had solid table salt, sodium chloride. So you know when you get a one grain of salt, you know, if you remember mole concept, which you should, remember we said one mole of these is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And we know how big 10 to the 23rd of those are. Okay, so one, you know, I don't know the periodic table in front of you, let me think here. I think sodium has a mass of 22, I don't remember, it's fine. And this has like a mass of 35, 36. So if I had 86 grams of this, that would be one mole. Okay, but what if I have one grain? It would still be something like, who knows what, 10 to the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 10 to the 14th probably. So it's still going to be a lot. So how, do all, how does 10 to the 14th in one grain measure up right here? How do they arrange themselves? So let's think about it. So this is something similar to IMS, but it's going to be called something else. So if you were if you were one of these, and you same structure, and you will start to learn. Hear me say the structure leads to a function. Okay, the chemical structure leads to the function. When we get the biochem, you'll really see that. So right here we've got strongly we have sodium chloride stable chill, strongly positive sodium ion on one end of the molecule. Strongly positive, negative on the other chloride on the other side. So if these two had to coexist, how would they arrange themselves? Well, we know that opposites attract. So if this one to make one, again, let's pretend it's just like one salt crystal. And this gets into that crystal last surface. So one crystal of salt, one little grain of salt has a gazillion of these. So this guy's going to come in here, and where how should it again contort itself? So let's put it over here. Right here, just like this. Notice how the negative end of this molecule is attracted to this side. So this is a pretty strong, those red lines, that's a pretty strong what we call electrostatic force that holds the molecule together. That's really strong because you have an extremely positive and an extreme, this ain't water where it's a weaker IMF. This is ridiculously positive. This is ridiculously supercharged negative. Therefore, you have this strong electrostatic force. Well, that's not the only thing. What if we have another one? So then we bring in another one, another sodium chloride. How's it going to come down here? Well, it's going to go like this. Like that. So watch how it's going to go. And... A positive Cl negative. Again, stupidly positive, stupidly negative. So these electrostatic forces act like glue. And they glue these things, not glue literally, but figuratively glue them together. And let's add another one. Let's put another brick of sodium chloride salt here. How do I arrange it? ClNa, no way. Oh, that just rhymes. Positive so sodium. Cl negative, forming another electrostatic attraction. Okay, so right here, you see how that, that's your crystal lattice structure that you're starting to develop. But how, let's think for a minute. If I was heat, and I'm a form of energy, and it wants to cause, oh remember, energy is the ability to cause change. Well, if we're going to add heat, energy, which is going to do work on this structure, because remember, work is energy. If it's going to apply a force to cause this, these individual molecules to displace, again, build on what you've learned before, am I going to, is it going to take a lot of energy to cause this to change, or a little bit of energy? In other words, is it going to take 
a lot of energy to overcome this electrostatic force or a little bit? Well, I'll tell you this. If it's really strong, it's going to take a lot of heat, an insane amount of heat. And hence, that's the reason why it has a high melting point. We're not talking about breaking the bond. We're talking about breaking the electrostatic force, which is analogous to an IMF. And if we break them, it means we go from solid sodium chloride to liquid sodium chloride. And then gaseous, but you'd have to add a lot of energy for that to happen. And again, brittle, I just need you to know, due to their perfect structure, if anything, they fracture at these joints, at these electrostatic attractions. So once again, that's why it has a high melting point. Now let me ask you this. Could electricity go through here? No. Because electricity needs free dissociated, remember I showed you how they broke apart, free dissociated ions in solution. Because those dissociated ions are going to carry that electrical current. These guys ain't going to carry anything. They're stuck to each other. Okay? So this can't conduct. It can only conduct when it's in water dissolved and surrounded by water molecules causing new IMFs to form. Okay? So again, these are the five properties. This is part two. High melting point. Again, we just talked about heat being energy, doing work on something. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of energy to cause change. Why? Because these are strong, stupidly strong forces that hold these molecules together. That's why ionic compounds have a high melting point. And eventually you'll learn that covalent compounds are shared, and those bonds that hold the molecule together are strong, but the ends, depending if they're polar or not, they have lower melting points, but we'll get to that eventually. Okay, so you should have had the outline done, then you should have watched this, and then we'll go from there. Okay, hope that helps. Get on it.